And I heard a commercial. Jimmy Brown, the great football player, and Johnny Unitas, who was with the Baltimore Colts, said, if you're looking for a second chance, join the job corps. Get an education. Learn a profession. And I did. I took them up on it. That's why commercials are very important to me. You at least better be telling the truth. Because if they had told me, look, looking for a second chance, jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, I would have driven there and jumped off. My heroes meant that much to me. Anyway, I went to the Job Corps and learned electronic assemblies. I got a basic education, a general education diploma, and even on my way to college. One day in the dressing room, not the dressing room, but the uh, little day room, we were uh, looking at a boxing match. It was Muhammad Ali. He was Cassius Clay then fighting Floyd Patterson. All the kids were listening. And they said, George, you're a bully. You come all the way from Texas. You think you're so bad. Why don't you become a boxer? I said, okay, I'll show you. I'll be a boxer. I don't know what I was saying. So I transferred from Grants Pass, Oregon, to Pleasanton, California, where I was going to take up boxing. First person to meet after I got in there in the reception dormitory was the boxing coach. I ran to him. Say, hey, I want to be a boxer. He said, well, you're big enough and you're ugly enough. Come on down to the gym. <laughs> so, uh, so a week of working out, he gave me a boxing match. There was going to be a little exhibition down in the gym. And so <laughs> I told all my friends after I saw my opponent, this guy was skinny. You could see his ribs like nothing. I told everybody, please come see me. You're going to see the best fighter you've ever seen. Because I'd seen this skinny guy. I got into the ring with him that night. The gym was filled with people. And I came out, and he hit me with something I'd never heard of called a jab. Boom. I said, what? And when I tried to reach at him, he moved away and did it again. So I, I got him and tried to pick him up. They said, no, put him down. I said, well, he keeps doing that to me. <laughs> well, they laughed me out of that gym because I'd take a swing and I'd go all the way and fall down. And I'd almost fall out of the ring. They laughed me out of that gym. I said, that's the end of boxing. I'll never try that again. But Doc Brodus kept on me. He said, look, stick with it, George. You can become an Olympic gold medalist if you just stop staying out of trouble, stay out of the and stay in the gym, but finally tricked me into one more boxing match. I thought it would be a bye. Called me up, you know, if you get a bye, you get a trophy. And I wanted to take these trophies home to Houston, Texas, to prove to everybody I was a fighter. I didn't really want to fight, though. <laughs> they called me out one night, and boy, I had to get up there again. This time I was so worried and scared, I went wild like a windmill. They stopped the fight, and I was a winner. I said, really? And I started to dance up and down. I said, this is pretty nice. I said, this is the last time I'll do it, but then there was a chance for a golden glove, another golden glove. Well, this happened within a year. This must have been 67. In 1968, 25 fights later, no, I'm sorry, I was a, 25 fights later, I was an Olympic gold medalist. 